it was like off the cuff. Now I feel like, oh my God, like what a great speaker. Um, hi everyone, my name's Brennan. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna present something completely different. I've never done this before. I'm really excited actually. Um, five things skateboarding taught me uh, about startups. Um, so we talk about this a lot in the tech community. We talk about this a lot in the startup community failing. Um, but really what I wanna ask you is, have you ever seen someone fail? And I mean like flat out face first, fail. Um, it's something that I think is, is really interesting about skateboarding because if you search skateboarding, um, you don't even have to add the keyword fail and you're going to see thousands of images of it. And so here's one. Um, close your eyes. Now. Um, complete, ouch, total, concrete belly flop. Hi, uh, my name is Brendan McEachern. I uh, skateboard to work now in the summertime, but when I was a kid, I, I uh, used to skateboard all the time. And that's actually how I learned to be a developer. So for whatever reason, I thought uh, putting our skateboard videos online was a good idea. And so I had to learn how to build websites. Um, now I'm a first time CEO, co-founder of Soapbox HQ, and I'll tell you a little bit about that right now. We like to start um, by giving a quote by uh, Lewis Platt, the former Hewlett Packard chairman and CEO. And he's known for saying, if only HP knew what HP knows, we'd be three times more productive. And what he's getting at there is that the front line employees at almost every organization has great ideas, but they have no way of actually getting these ideas to the headquarters attention. And that sucks for them, right? Because 80% of an organization's potential for improvement actually lies within those frontline ideas. So if you're ignoring those frontline employees, you're actually only hitting about 20% of your organization's true potential. So we see that as a need for these organizations to manage the vast potential from the front lines. And the way that they've been doing that since 1880, when the first suggestion box was made, um, is broken, completely broken. There's no accountability, there's no feedback loops, there's absolutely no way of figuring out ROI. So what we did when we built Soapbox is we didn't create a new platform for submitting ideas. We created a new platform for measuring accountability, transparency, creating new forms of feedback loops, and calculating ROI from those frontline ideas. And really what we're doing is trying to help organizations move ideas from the front lines to the bottom lines. Super fortunate to work with um, some of Canada's and North America's, really the world's um, industry leading clients uh, from Coke to Walmart to uh, the world's largest mining company in Australia. Um, and I'm even more proud actually to introduce my team here. So industry leading clients, industry beating team. Um, and uh, this is a reminder to shout out that we're always hiring. Um, so that guy there could be you or girl. Um, we're looking for developers, people in customer support, sales. Um, Johnny, raise your hand. If you're interested, talk to me or Johnny. Um, always looking for more people. And caveat to that, we have a, an incredible world-class culture, which means we're super, super picky. Um, but when you mix kind of an amazing team and an amazing culture, um, you get some pretty awesome results. Okay, move on. Remember this guy. Ouch. So that's actually Nigel Houston. He's one of, I would say, arguably one of the world's best skateboarders. Um, and what you notice there, and this kind of brings me to my first point, is that um, people who are great are actually crazy, and I think this is true in the business world as well. Um, to understand what this guy's going through, he just did a concrete belly flop 15 feet. And when most people would, A, I would say, like, never do that because it's stupid, um, other people would kind of give up after shot number one. I, I, I would have. I would have never done that. Um, he got up and then did it again. Um, and he kept doing it until he did it. And uh, I think this is the essence of what we're doing with startups. 80% of businesses fail within the first five years, and it's probably more than that. And the number one reason that these businesses fail, according to stats, um, is that people go into it for the wrong reason. It's really not about the glory or the money or working for yourself. Um, it's about kind of achieving what you wanted to achieve when you first set out. And so I'd say number four here is uh, you better friggin' believe it, right? Like if you're gonna do this, you better believe it's gonna happen. You better fully believe that you can get this done. Um, so take that leap of faith. Uh, this is uh, number four, Jamie Thomas, uh, the leap of faith. Um, more people have broken their legs doing this jump than have landed it. Um, so take the leap of faith, but 
believe your own BS. Believe you can land that trick. Um, go in with full intent to stick the landing. Um, success, to me, isn't judged by the logos on your shoes. It's not about your sponsorship. Um, it's not about the, the people that you call funders. Um, to me, success is about how you stick the landing. And so you'll see a lot of skateboarders with Red Bull and DC and different logos on their shirts. Um, but it's not about Sequoia or Andreessen Horowitz or any of those other major investors. Um, it's about what you're able to do with your business that really matters. Um, and that, to me, I think is something skateboard is, uh, skateboarding is really great at. Um, number two, innovation never happens in isolation. This guy's name is Rodney Mullen, and he's probably the inventor of weird tricks. Um, a trick like that never gets invented by him dreaming. That's invented by 65 other tricks that he's merged together into one and a team of people that pushes him to do more and that he pushes to do more. So get some co-founders um, and other people that are awesome to team up with you and, and push you farther. Um, and finally, the idea is the easy part, and I'll leave it with this because I'm probably over, I'm sorry. Um, this is the back of the napkin diagram for something awesome. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be huge. Um, this diagram is completely different than the actual ramp, right? And then standing right here is like way different. Um, and I think there's a couple, like the guy who just stood up, like this is you, like it's, it's, it's completely different. Um, and then standing there is way different, right? And then being that guy um, is what kind of startup is all about. Um, it's going down the 80 foot ramp as fast as you possibly can um, and doing your best to stake the landing. So thank you. Any, do we do, we do Q and A? Yeah, sure. Um, I should say, yeah, we've been in business for four years and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Toronto startup, yeah. Toronto, yeah. You got any questions? Uh, skate, one skateboarder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just limbo. I don't need to I uh, wanted to know where did you find your first uh, venture capital partner? Um, great question. I think it's a great question for Toronto as well. Uh, we bootstrapped for, so, the question was, where did we get our first venture capital partner? Um, we bootstrapped for three years. So for us, um, you know, we just started building what we thought the, the world needed and then uh, started selling it and then kept selling it until we could pay ourselves a salary and, and quit our jobs and um, kept doing that until we could employ a couple of people. Um, and then now we're 18 people, uh, Queen West area. Uh, so venture capital, venture partners, I'm still looking for some. Um, yeah, I mean, Canada's great because you can get some, some really awesome government grants. Um, you can get some, some pretty cool kind of kickbacks um, tax-wise from the government as well. Um, OCE is great. Mars is great, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, keep your eyes out. Talk to the people in the room. They'll point you in the right direction. And then there's also some amazing funders in Canada if you are kind of going down that track. Um, talk to them. Come out to all of these events, and you'll, you'll see familiar faces. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about showing my first mock-up. It's like exactly the same. So the only, I guess if you, if you consider it a pivot, all we've done is um, our vision is still more or less exactly the same, which is everyone should use something like this. Um, but what we've done is um, kind of narrow it um, so that we can actually execute on, on one particular path um, until we do a great job of that and then kind of broaden it again. All right, let's give a round of applause.